Okay, so good good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome to the latest episode of our virtual tech webinar series. It's my great pleasure today to be introducing Shedrach Akinteo, who in a few moments will be giving his presentation um, about modern JavaScript build tools. Uh, before we dive in, just a quick word from our sponsors. So today's meetup is brought to you by LogRocket. Um, the vast majority of you today will be coming from our blog. Uh, you may not know that we actually have a great product for when you're building and fixing applications. Uh, LogRocket is a front-end application monitoring solution. It combines error tracking, performance monitoring, infrastructure monitoring, and web analytics. It's all rolled into one, so your engineering and your product teams can all use a single source of truth for all of these different aspects of app development. Um, for a more efficient re remediation of your problems and iteration of your feature sets, in addition, you can integrate it with all of your existing backend monitoring tools. So for more information, just head over to logrocket.com and you can get a personalized demo, or you can just sign up with a free account um, and just get a sense and a taste of what it can do for you and how you might find a use for it. Um, just so everybody knows, a recording of this will be sent to you, uh, to your emails after the conclusion of the webinar. Um, and we'll also be uploading it to our YouTube channel. So you can just go and watch it there at your convenience. Um, and just a quick note that we also have some upcoming webinars next week and the week after that, round up November. Um, so we've got Scaling the Testing uh, Pyramid in TypeScript on November 21st, and then Learn How to Make a 360 VR Video in Unity on November 28th. Uh, if you're interested in signing up to these, you can just go to the URL right there, or you can just type in LogRocket Meetups, and it'll be the first link, and you can find everything that we've got coming up there. Now, with all that out of the way, I would like to hand off to Shedrak, who will get on with this presentation. Take it away, Shedrak. Awesome. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this webinar. Uh, my name is Shedrak Akintayo, and today... We would be talking about what you need to know about modern view tools, right? Um, the, the gist here is that um the story of you know mode of view tools generally need to be told. Um, a lot of people just know that okay, we have view tools, right? But do you really know the story, like right? how we got to where we are, right? How we got to Webpack, how we got to Vix, how we got to um um even the new Toggle Pack by Vessel. We need to understand you know the the origins of view tools to be able to know, okay. This is why we need them. This is why they exist. So the essence of this talk is to take you through the journey. I like to call it a journey because it's a journey of how we got to where we currently are in terms of JavaScript view tools. Now, um, without further ado, I would like to introduce myself. Like I said, my name is Shulek Akintayo. I am a developer relations manager at Wilco. Wilco is a gamified upskilling platform where you can learn how to code in a very, very real world environment. So check out Wilco. Um, soft, I'm a software engineer and like a technical writer. I've written a couple of blog posts for LogRocket too. So um, LogRocket is family. And um, I am a founder of Devil Community Africa. We are a very small community of Devil, Devil enthusiasts in Africa trying to you know, get better and also learn more about the trade. So let's just get started. Um, so before we move in, we need to know exactly what we're going to be touching, right? This talk has four different segments. We're going to talk about what are build tools, you know, the evolution of front-end build tools, like the evolution, the map, the journey. I like to call it the journey, which is the, this is basically the essence of the talk. Then we're going to talk about the most popular build tool that you can possibly find, Webpack and Babel, then its drawbacks. Then Webpack and Babel, we would move on to the new generation of JavaScript build tools, right? This is the current generation, the next, I like to call them the future of JavaScript build tools. So let's just, you know, get into it. So um, before we we actually talk about what build tools are, we need to talk about, we need to ask ourselves certain questions, right? Why is the web built? Why do we have to build the web to be able to manipulate the web, create websites, create web applications? Why do we need to build the web? Now, the first point is dependency management. Now, every single web application you've created as written in JavaScript, written in HTML, CSS, JavaScript, which is basically the web, they need a bunch of dependencies, right? 
Um, React, if you are writing React, React has a bunch of you know, packages that you can install, npm install, yarn install. You can install these packages to supercharge your application, right? To give you um, the ability to do certain things that does not come out of the box, right? You do not, to save you from having to write extra code. These dependencies are needed for your application to actually run properly. So we build the web because we want to be able to manage our dependencies properly. We want to be able to share code that we, ex we need and remove code that we don't need, right? So dependency management is one of the most important aspects of why we build the web. The next thing is transpiling, right? Um, um, we need to be able to convert you know, certain um, syntaxes in JavaScript that is not available on the web to the accepted syntaxes on the web. So transpiling is another major aspect of why we need build tools, right? Why the web is built every single time we we do a, we, we, we take an application from development to production, every single time we start a development server, we need to build the web, right? This is another reason. Now bundling, you know, how we are able to take all our application, put it into a, 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 bundle, a bundler and then generate similar code, but in a much more smaller and, you know, performance manner. It's one of the reasons why, how, you know, build to supercharge and improve the performance of JavaScript build to, of, of your JavaScript application generally, because it helps with transpiling, bundling, then also dependency management. Then another thing is minifying, right? You cannot take the original, you know, um, size of your application to production, right? The set of, of development code must be must be larger. Of course, we have to be larger than the production code. We in production we consider we want to consider our application to be faster. We want our application to you know be more performant. That when we click on a button, it, it reacts instantly because the users do not have so much payments um, in patience rather. So we want to be able to minify our code into a form that is safer and is more performant for our browsers. Uh, another thing is module management isn't fully supported by browsers yet. I mean, I know a bunch of browsers, like probably a lot of browsers actually have support for, you know, ECMAScript models, but some browsers do not have that yet. And we need to build our code in such a way that every single browser that we can probably think of, apart from Internet Explorer, of course. I mean, I mean, I don't know who still builds for Internet Explorer, but if you still need build for Internet Explorer, no shades, like I'm just saying that. <laughs> module management isn't fully supported by browsers yet. So we still need to build our code to be performant and you know usable in every single browser you can think of. This makes your application accessible, right? It makes your application useful because a lot of people still you know use certain browsers that can help them, you know, wherever region they are in, maybe Opera Mini, maybe an Opera Mini, Opera browser is like the popular browser in their region and every single person uses it. You need your application to be able to work in that browser, right? So this is one of the reasons why the web is built. So to go over it again, the web is built because of dependency management, transpiling, bundling, minifying, module management is not supported by the browser yet. So we need to be able to make our code uh, or our JavaScript models to be accepted by every single browser that we can possibly find. So um, the next thing we talk about is while we've explained why we need to build the web, we need to talk about the tools that actually do the job, right? We need to, which is why the essence of this talk generally. Why, what are build tools? We've spoken about why the web is built. And the next thing the, we should probably talk about is why and um, what are build tools rather. So the code used in production, everybody knows this. Um, um, the code used in production is different from the code using development, right? The code you write in, in development should would certainly not be the same as the code that is being executed in production. This is why bundles or uh, um, uh, builds exist, right? They make your production, your development code better and more performant to be able to run in a production environment. So in production, you must build your code with tools that help it run fast, like very, very important performance. Right, you need to be able to click on a button and get response immediately. You need to be able to see that a web page as fast as possible when you click, you know, you input the URI in your browser. You need to be able to manage dependencies, you know, you must automate certain tasks, you know, you need certain um, scripts to run when you are in production, you need certain scripts to run when you're in development. You need to be able to load external modules because, of course, we cannot write every single part of our application by ourselves. Sometimes you need support from, like, you know, using external modules, then, and so much more, right? 
um, the 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 process of getting your development code into production is like really really like large. Like there's so many things to consider, and having to do these things by ourselves by default would be a really really pain. Would be so much of a pain. This is why we have build tools. This this these tools make life so much easier for us. So tools that make it possible to run development code and turn development code into production level code are called build tools. That's like the most basic definition for build tools. Build tools are just tools, right? That make it easy for you to run development code, right? Um, start a development server, you know, npm run dev, npm run starts, right? Just run a development server for your code, for you to be able to see your application run, um, run live, for you to be able to see your JavaScript code run live, right? Um, um, when you're writing React applications, when you're building with React, React when you're building with um, Vite, any, basically any JavaScript framework, you know that you need to convert that JavaScript into HTML for you to be able to see um, what they call it for you to be able to see, let's say JSX for you to be able to see it displayed on your browser. Now, your development server is responsible for when you do an import React, when you do um, um a um const create React class, and when you create a React class, when you need to create a React component, what is responsible for you being able to run that and see it on your browser is it be certainly a build tool, right? Um. Um, so it basically gives us the ability to then turn that development code, npm run build, right? Build the um, development code, make it smaller, minify it, transpile it, bundle it, and push it to the production environment and make it faster, right? So these tools are referred to as production, as um, uh, build tools. Really, really important to know that they know the differences between you know how you know build tools um exist. Now the next thing we will talk about is types of build tools. Build tool, a build tool is a general name for packet managers, tax runners, module loaders, module bundlers. You probably have seen packet managers a couple of times. I mean, if you write JavaScript, you might have run npm, you have used npm to install a package or execute a script. You might have used Rayan. There's also something called PNNP or PNPM. It's also a very, very recent and new um, um, package manager. Then we have tax runners, right? We need to be able to execute certain tax, right? We have examples of this as gulp, gulp grunts. Um, if if you um if you've been like you know writing JavaScript code for a while now, if you've been in the era of you know the gulp and grunt, we know that these tools like were game changers. They make they made um uh, writing front end code easier. They made it easy for every single front end developer that had was able to run uh, had um, get their hands on it because it just simplified the whole process of taking your, your code to um production and also writing um JavaScript code. Then we have module loaders, you know, like webpack, ESM loaders, required JS. When we need more external modules, we have module bundlers like you know roll up, webpack, parcel. Now this all these options that all these tools I've mentioned are referred to as build tools. Like a build tool, like I mentioned, takes helps you run development code and take the development code, help you convert it into production code. Now, these tools are responsible for what a build tool does. They are the build tool is a encompassing body, encompassing body for these particular tools that you can find here. So the a build tool can be split into you know. Package managers, tax runners, module loaders, module bundlers. It's really, really important to know, like you know, the different types of build tools. Now, while we've you know spoken about um, um the different types of build tools, we need to understand something. We need to understand how we've gotten to this particular point that we are in in time in you know JavaScript in handling JavaScript build tools, right? So we need to know, okay, this is where we started from. This is how far we've gone. It's really, really important to put things into perspective to see how JavaScript applications, our build tools in JavaScript have improved over the years. Now, the first build tool came out in the 20, within 2005 and 2010, the first build tools came out. Now, this at least 2005 and 2010, is the first is the era of the first bundlers, Dojo and Google Closure tools. So if you've been writing code as far back as 2005, it is certain that you might have used these do these bundlers for one or two things, right? So Dojo was like a build tool that was in, um very popular then. They they basically laid the foundation for how build tools are are, are like built over the years. 
then Google closed your tools. But the issue is that with these tools, like they had certain issues. They were not perfect, right? They were extremely slow. They were heavy. They required Java. Now, you, you know, like if you've written like Android code before, you know that having to run Java is as painful as it gets, as it gets. Now imagine you needed to install Java to be able to do an NPM run dev. You needed to install Java and you know how heavy that would be in terms of you know computational resources. And um, the documentation were, um, was poor, which leads to poor developer experience. You, it's, you of course, you cannot use a, a tool without having a great documentation. You find yourself lost and you find yourself asking a lot of questions instead of having to do the, the actual work. It was slow and developer experience was, was poor. This was like the issues of the first one that they worked, right? They worked, they did their job. But the issue is that they were not perfect. People, the thing about humans or the thing about the JavaScript community is that we are only seeking for how fast can this thing run? Like, how better can we get? Now, these are like the issues of the 2005-2010 bundlers, like the first era of bundler, Dojo and Google Closure tools. And that issue was that Google Closure tool itself was proprietary. So people were scared of having vendor locking because Google was the creator of it, right? Um, um, if you've been uh, you know, in tech for like a long time, if you know how vendor locking work is, it's really, really scary for any software development team, right? To be depending on one company and what if the company shuts down, what if the company has its you know, hacked, what's the security flaw? You do not want to, you know, hand over your code to a specific tech company, right? Rather than you know having it open sourced. Uh, so after the era of the first bundler was done, JavaScript community was like, "What next can we do? Like, how better can the build to ecosystem get?" Which is when Gulp and Grunt came in. Now, Gulp and Grunt, when they came in, they were they were it. They were the big boys. They were running the um Bluetooth ecosystem because they made everything easy. Like, you know, they were the first to try and standardize and build reusable pipelines on top of plugins. So you could have like you know, what what um um webpack called presets, you know, go up and grounds were the first to try and standardize standardize is where you have to like you know when you could build reusable pipelines with across your different applications. It's made life so much easier for front end devs and the adoption was really, really, really high then um, it gave developers the freedom to write their own build scripts. Now, if imagine where you were using a bundler where you everything was default, you could not specify how your build should carry out. That's like one of the most painful thing because every single application is different from the other. I want to, I want to add certain things to the way my application is being built because of my technical experience, for example, but imagine when, like doing the favor of the first one last where you could not write a script, you just have to execute the command that this um the Google Closure tool and Dojo gave you, and that was it. You could not really um you could not really make your make you no know, customize the beauty to work for you, right? So um it's go up and grunt in the era of 2010 to 2012 came with the freedom they yeah, came with the ability for you to be able to write your own build scripts which is what every single bundler currently are building upon right they brought that philosophy they changed the game with that single thing now the beautiful thing about javascript community is that we are always looking to um, improve our tools to see how fast we can get like this is definitely certainly not the peak of how beauty should be so in 2012 babel came in babel basically is one of the most used build tool by every single bundler module loader that you can possibly find. Babel became very, very popular because it helped convert ES6 syntax to common JS, right? And at the time, ES6 was not really popular. Like, bundlers did not like have full support for it. They could have support for XYZ, but they did not have support for XYZ. So Babel came in and came with the, with the like you know with the new idea with new fresh perspective of how you can give you the ability to convert your ES6 syntax right um you write your ES6 code you run your npm run dev you try to push you know npm run build it takes you very very little you know time for them to be able to convert that code you've written in ES6 to common JS that browsers could easily understand then you also had support for other browsers like you know 
Internet Explorer. I, I feel like I'm I'm shitting Internet Explorer too much, but I mean I love Internet Explorer. Everybody has used it at some point. It was really great, great, but now it's old news. But it has support for you know, older browser. You know, you could um, um with polyfills, we're able to like you know use your your make your your application run on you know um older browsers that do not have support for some of the new um or the recent JavaScript features. Then it also allowed, aside for the fact that that um Gulp and Grunt brought you know gave the developers the freedom to write their own build scripts right Babel basically allowed developers to build custom plugins for their for their needs right so um as as you know as a as a software development code gets really really large there are certain things that you want to automate yourself right there are certain things that you want to be able to have an influence on because of the way you are building that particular application now Babel came with the you know, ability for you to be able to create custom plugins and um, you know satisfy whatever need you probably possibly have have. So that was like you know the era of Babel. This was like 2020, 2012, like a couple of a really really far time ago. So Babel has been existing since then. Then after the era of Babel, then came the era of Browser Refi. That's the 2012 2014. Browser Refi did not necessarily need to. You do not need to um you don't really need to write in you know common js it had support for es6 model syntax so you could write your models in es6 and you you do not need to convert anything it just does the job for you then node.js developers really feasted on this because it had the same syntax at node.js so if you knew node.js you don't need to learn any other syntax for you to be able to use by the fire as a build tool and it also came with plugins now the first entrance of you know npm into the game into the um you know build tool space but if i quickly incorporated it so you could run npm scripts could write scripts with npm and execute with npm you could do npm or npm build npm install so but if i was like the first build tool that gave you the ability to be able to use npm to like you know manage your packages for dependency management, um, um etc. That was what Butterfly built. Now, if you noted something, right? Every single build tool has built on the past, apart from you know the first you know build tools. Since the first build tool, every single build tool has taken something from the past and you know just made it better, right? Um, go up and ground took, um, the ability for you to run code, right? And um. Uh, um, simplify it, minify it, you know, transpile it, etc. Babel took the ability for you to build plugins, you know, custom plugins from Gop and Grunt and made it even better. Now, Zarify takes what the ability for your um, um, Babel to convert ESC syntax to common JS and just made it standard, standardize it, and um, also built on uh, made plugins even better, right? So every this is, the reason why I call it an evolution is because every single Build tool has built on each other, which is like really, really impressive. It shows like this is how far JavaScript community is actually improving. It just shows the map. It's basically like a map that shows this is how far JavaScript community has improved over the years. Now, another so after the era of um 2012, 2014, after the era of Buzzerify, then came Webpack, which is what everybody, every single person that has written front end code has used. Right. Um. Um. If you been tech for just like you no know, since twenty fifteen, you know that uh, Webpack was like it. Webpack made it so easy for you to incorporate um build tools for you to pick your code, your development code to production. It brought so many cool features, so many better um um developer experience to um um build to you know, building JavaScript code. Better, really, really great documentation. The, the um developer experience was really really careful to task after, but it had its faults, right? But Webpack was clearly faster than Browserify. Like I said, every single build to build on the previous on on the past, like you know, they made the past better. So it was faster than Browserify. Webpack server came, you know, where you could, like, you know, have, you know, things like code module replacements. You've had code splitting to make your code even, you know, your application even much more performant. You could, you know, you could change um, a code in your browser and you could see it in your, in your um, editor and you could see it immediately 
reloaded on your browser. So it brought out the the um it brought a really great experience of live reloading, which is what every single um bundler or every single build to use at the moment. It also in commit npm scripts even better. It, it you could execute you could write custom scripts and have it executed by uh, with your MP, uh, with Webpack. You could um it had like. Webpack currently has the largest plugin ecosystem for any single build tool. So it came with the ability for you to create plugins, custom plugins, share with other people, you know, publish it so that people will use it. Webpack was just it. Webpack basically made it seem like we're in the future, like things could never ever get better, right? Um, it also came with presets, collection of plugins. So if you write um um React, they were like presets for React, like you no know, certain plugins that work specifically for React um code bases. If you wrote Vue, if you wrote um um you know um Angular JS at that time, it had presets which basically are a collection of plugins specific for a um type of you know JavaScript framework. Then it also had a better developer experience than other build tools, you know, great documentation. Um, every single thing was carefully thought out for developers. It was just like we were in the future, right? But the beautiful thing, like I mentioned, is the JavaScript community constantly seeks to improve how well things could be, which is the future, right? The future of build tools include Parcel, Vit, Rollup, SWC, ES Build, Turbo Pack, and Bond. Like, Parcel basically brought the ability for you to not need to bundle in, in development and only for production. In development, everything was great. Everything was awesome. Everything is literally, literally done out of the box. Vits is insanely fast, brings out that speed that you need for your, your development server for, you know, Converting your code for building your code for production. Rollup made it easy for you to build JavaScript libraries, made it faster for you to compile JavaScript libraries. Um, SWC, which is basically Rust based, was it, it literally we saw it in action in Next.js. It was really, really fast. ES build is the fastest build tool of all. Um, it's as fast as gets. There's no build tool that's as fast as ES build. Um, because it's basically such an experiment to show how fast JavaScript, um, JavaScript build tools can be. Then Turbo Pack, which was recently built um, by, released by Vessel in India when Next.js 13 was released, is also another incredibly fast build tool with great developer experience. Born also, if you've like, you know, checked, you know, JavaScript ecosystem uh, forums like Twitter, Reddit, you will see that Born is like the trending kid in the block. Like it's really, really fast, has really, really great developer experience. And now, while we've mentioned the future, right? Um, let's talk about modern build tools. We've, we've spoken about the past, like how things were being done in the past. Now, what does the future look like? Like, let's highlight how the future, how better the future can get. Now, well, before we talk about the future, let's talk about Webpack, right? Why are we moving on for Webpack, right? What are the drawbacks? What what is making Webpack no longer? you know, the go-to build tool for software development teams that want to incorporate, you know, build tools into their entire development workflow. Webpack was launched around 2014, 2015, and it is one of the most popular bundlers or JavaScript build tool that you can possibly find. Um, tons of production apps and frameworks such as Next.js, Create React app, and more use it for bundling and building. Additionally, it has the large, like I mentioned earlier, it has the largest library of plugins out of any bundler. And it introduced concepts like, as, as in 2015, it introduced concepts like hot module replacement, live reloading, code splitting, presets, like, you know, a collection of plugins. But this was like fun times. Like, there, there was no, nothing that was better than Webpack as at that time. But like I mentioned earlier, the way JavaScript community is, we are constantly finding, looking for better ways our tools can be, right? How better can our, our tools get? This is where people found that, okay, Webpack was not doing exactly what we expected it to do. It wasn't, it was great while it was, you know, and you know, when when it was its time, but now we need to move on for Webpack. We need to look for tools that are faster, right? Tools that make it easy for you to do certain things. Webpack was not it. Let's look at the drawbacks of Webpacks. Why are people moving on to Webpack? Despite being popularly used and widely used, it has some issues. It makes it less suitable for the modern developer experience. That's the future, like I mentioned that beauties are meant to have. Just you know, take a drink, um, a sip of water. 
So it's it's no longer what we foresee the modern developer experience for build tools, right? Um, some of these issues include difficult configuration process. <laughs> the reason why I laughed is because if you've using if you've used um webpack for really really complex applications or for even large react applications you know how difficult it is to configure wordpress wordpress is very everybody knows that wordpress is quite popular for how much one has to learn just to be able to configure it for your application right it is so stressful and unnecessarily difficult you need to be you need to basically configure it to do the things that should be available out of the box this is not what i consider the future of JavaScript um, build tools. This is not what we want to see in the future. We want to be able to see very, very simple configuration process or almost no configuration process. Um, it has slow development speed. It has to bundle all the modules when you start the development server. So this makes it you know, um, um, really, really slow. And despite introducing Kitchen in Webpack 5, it's still not supported across all frameworks and plugins. And um, for you know, for it, a bundler its size, it had a larger bundle size than other modern bundlers because it uses polyfills to load modules. Webpack bundle size can be larger than others. Now, if you if you see the main the issues I mentioned here is that it was complex configuration process, slow in terms of development speed, and large bundle size. This is not what we want for the future. The future should be faster. The future should be better, just like how things have improved over the years, right? Um, this is what I expect the future to fix in terms of, you know, how the modern developer experience or modern developer build tools should be. Now, this is for, what, what I can show here is an example of a sample webpack on view file. All of this is basically to do really, really simple things, right? Um, maybe to add the auto prefix for your SaaS application, if your code uses SaaS, so add external plugin for loading, you know, for um, preloaders and loaders for um, um, extensions like JSX, extensions like JSX, um, ES6, and um, to define a path where your, you know, bundled code should be. All these things are like so complex, right? Why do I have to write a file this long just to tell my blood, my bundler what to do, right? I need this to be done by itself, right? I need this to be done by default, but I need to be able to customize it when I need it, right? But Webpack, it's really, really difficult to have, you know, to configure really, really basic things like, you know, handling, you know, file extensions. Like that should be done out of the box. That's really, really, that's, that's like one of the most basic things to be able to handle. Now, for the next segment of this talk, we're going to be having um, a brief look at what the future looks like. Um, the drawbacks of the of these build tools, like for the future, I mean the build tools and um um how they've made the you know the modern developer experience for JavaScript build tools to look like. The first things we the first um build tool we'll consider is Parcel. Now, you can check out Parcel at parceljs.org. Parcel is a lightning fast zero configuration. Like I mentioned earlier, the future should be zero config. Only and I should be able to config whenever I only when I need to. It's Parcel is a lightning fast zero configuration build tool that you know has a great out of the box development experience with scalable application um, architecture that can take your project from getting started to a massive production application. Parcel is just awesome, right? I personally used Parcel. I think I've written about Parcel um a couple of times. Parcel just you know Parcel brought the idea of you know zero config, just run npm install parcel and start the server and you are pretty much good. It does everything out of the box when you're recognizing the type of code you've written. Parcel had features like zero configuration, just install a really, really fast bundle time, multi-core processing, so it doesn't matter um, how, um, how many calls you have, it splits load across, you know, in, in parallel across, you know, different calls to make your um, build process and production process even faster. Plugins are not necessarily needed because every single thing you can possibly think of is out, done out of the box, right? So you may ne not necessarily need plugins compared to Webpack where you have to install 500 plugins to be able to do something very basic. Now, it has like really awesome developer experience, but for every good thing, for every advantage, it's actually a disadvantage. It has its disadvantages, right? I wouldn't call it advantage, I would call it drawbacks, right? Um, 
some issues it has some issues when you are trying to use latest ES7 construct. Um, I was, you know, be able to um opportune to be able to um you know soft through the GitHub you know repo of um parcel and check out the issues. And I've seen like a couple of issues where people could not use um it could not um um transpile or bundle ES7 construct with like a bunch of issues. And I hope this is something that is fixed fixed in the future um future versions of you know parcel. Then another thing is that, like I mentioned, right, because plugins are not necessarily in there, everything is done out of the box. If you need to change config, you know, config to include extra Babel plugins, it results in a much more complex process than Webpack. The good thing is everything you need, you probably need is done out of the box. But if you need to include some extra Babel plugins, it could, you know, get really, really difficult. And this is like a developer experience that I feel like should be improved in previous in the next you know parcel version. Then first time bundling can be slower than other types of tools. The first time bundling is obviously faster than Webpack, right? But for other fast um other um bundlers, right? First time bundling can be slower. Now bundle folder is usually a mess compared to Webpack. And if you check if you check um your bundle folder. You see that Webpack is really, really well arranged, right? Every single thing is in the right folder. Every single file is named correctly. But since um parcel is everything is done out of the box, sometimes the bundled folder is usually a mess, right? Um, the names are not being generated correctly. Um, um, some names are like randomized, and you need to like have to search through these files to be able to know which is which. It's like one of the like you know essence, like the drawbacks of um um parcel but the good thing is that the parcel is constantly um improving their code improving their tool and i hope to see like you know this particular situation solved in the future but the great thing about parcel is of course zero config parcel bundle time multi-core processing plugins are not necessarily needed and awesome developer experience now the next view we'll be looking at is um is vit now if You've written Vue.js, you would know that Vit is like currently the official bundler for um Vue.js. It's built by um, um Evan Yu, who is the creator of um Vue.js. It is a build tool that is provides a fast and lean development experience for modern web projects. It has two parts, two major parts, a dev server and a build com command that helps you bundle your code. Now, you know, the features of you know Vit includes faster builds, right? It's faster than Webpack, Turbo Pepo, and Parcel. I mean Turbo Pack now. The funny thing about the speed of Vit is that when, when NextJS released Turbo Pack, which is their very new um um bundler, NextJS marketed to us that it is faster than Vit. The funny thing is, Evan Yu, who is the creator, did a quick Twitter thread where he compared the performance of Turbo um, Pack, not Turbo Repo, Turbo Pack, and Vit. And Vit was way faster in several conditions than Turbo Pack, which is why I put, I mentioned here, faster builds. If you check the timeline of Evan Yu, you will see, like, it's a very recent tweet, you will see the comparison. And I do not know why Vassel. Uh, you know, did what it did, but um, Vit is faster than Webpack, Parcel, and Turbo Pack. It is framework agnostic. The good thing about Vit is that you could use it for any JavaScript framework that you could possibly find, that you could possibly do or use because of how agnostic it is in terms of, you know, um, the frameworks. Then um, it has support for SSR, server-side rendering. It's still very experimental, but it works. And it's, um, um, I'm not sure if anybody uses it in the, um, production yet, but I've tried it in development and it actually works. And um, it has a great plugin system. Now, apart from the fact that it has a great plugin system, it also has support for rollup plugins. Rollup is a um, JavaScript um, bundler, module bundler. We'll look, it, look, look into it um, um, very soon. It also allows you to use another bone last plugin in it. This is just what I expect the future should look like. It has an awesome developer experience. But it has a little bit of issue. Like, like I mentioned, with every advantage and disadvantage, it lasts first class for Jest, special support for Jest, which is probably one of the most popular JavaScript testing frameworks. So you have to do a lot of work around to be able to use Jest um, with Vit. I hope this is something they are working on, looking at. Then different tools are being used for bundling 
development and production code. So ES build, one of the reasons why it is fast because it uses ES build, which is one of the fast, which is probably the fastest JavaScript build that I can find today. It uses ES build for development development code. Then it uses production build uh, bundle. It uses production for production. It uses rollup for production. Now the issue, the reason why this is a problem is because code that work in bond in um, development might not work in production because of the fact that it uses two different tools, right? The way tools philosophy are built is different, right? So I've seen like if we, I've seen an issue on GitHub where someone code was working in production in development, but when it was you know run in production, it failed, right? So this is like a an issue for um it is not a major issue but it's a very very you know concerning issue and i hope that in the next version of um it's which version two or no version three i think everyone you know one bundler should be used for both development and production code just to you know make sure that we are you know um up to date the other bundle like i mentioned is rollup you can take it out rollupjs.org if you are looking for a module bundler for JavaScript, like you have been in the JavaScript library, Rollup is the go-to bundler for you. It helps compile small pieces of code into something larger and more complex, such as a library or an application. The major use case for Rollup I have seen is for JavaScript libraries. It is easier to learn than Webpack. It gives you a fast build. It um, provides code splitting. It's perfect for um, libraries and it has a less and easier config compared to Webpack. The drawbacks, just so we, uh, you know, we don't go out of time, is um, the biggest issue with Rollup is that it only provides one feature, creating production bundles, right? You cannot use Rollup, to the best of my knowledge, in development, right? It is really, really, that's like a big problem and um, it helps you convert your production your mode your development code into you know production so it only provides production bundles then there's not really any developer experience right apart from a couple of options like file watching and catching it can't produce development bundles doesn't provide the web server and all these readability es modules by default so this is also an issue that i see in rollup and i believe that rollup is meant for mainly for javascript libraries so it would be an overkill to be able to match it up with like you know other bundlers like you no know, parcel webpack um um vit etc i feel like it just does what it's supposed to do and making and making it more than it should be we just overcomplicate the matter and it can just even get slower that's my opinion then es build es build is like very, very i think a lot of people don't know about es build but es build is an extremely fast javascript bundler it has features like extreme speed without needing a catch. So you don't even need to catch your files like parcel and webpack to be able to like, you know, run um, your, your, bond, your bundles again. Even with or without, it doesn't even need a catch. And ES6 and common JS modules, it has support for ES6 and common JS modules, three shaking of ES6 modules. And the beautiful thing about ESB is that you can use it in Go. So it has an API for both JavaScript and Go. It is faster than any other build tool. You can check ASB.github.io to check to see the benchmarking results. It is written in Go, which makes it really, really fast. The main aim of the project is actually to prove how fast JavaScript build tools can be. And it's perfect for any app, right? So the drawbacks, which is, like I said, every advantage is a disadvantage. It can be difficult to set up if you are used to zero config tools like Parcel, for example. It can be quite difficult to set up. Then it lacks support of rolling plugin for plugins like like Vite. Unlike Vite, Vite had support for rollup plugins. Like of course, if you want to switch, you know, you want to use rollup for your development or uh, production code, it lacks support for that. Then it lacks hot module replacement in the development server, which is also something that I see would be improved. But the main aim of AS build is that in wanted the creators wanted to show exactly how fast build tools in javascript can be fast can can get rather then some other build tools that we can look at right um one of the tools that we can look at uh that i advised you all to look at because of like you know i do not want this talk to be so long is born born is an incredibly fast javascript bundler i have not played with it so much but i've heard really really good things about it i've seen a bunch of people talk about it on twitter so you should check it out and um swc by next year's or by vessel rather um, but yeah, I think SWC is being used in Next.js in some 
you know, capacity. So um, it is built in Rust and anything, I mean, it's, I mean, if you know this by now, you don't know this by now, but anything built with Rust, it's really, really fast. It's one of the reasons why system developers like Rust is because of how fast and performant it is. So expect SWC to be really fast. Then Turbo Pack by Vessel, which is like the very, the latest kid on the block is quite fast. I've not had time to play with it. And um, you should check it out. It's it's um the marketing, you know, the marketing of it was it was supposed to be faster than a lot of build tools, pass or web pack, etc. But you should definitely check it out. And it's currently available in um Next.js 13. And um, so if you want to play with Next.js 13, you should also consider trying this out, this build tool to you know get the feel of it. Then in conclusion, soon I believe that soon we would be seeing more tools with no cost um configuration process better customizability, extensibility, just like how, you know, Vite gives you support for, you know, blog plugins and faster speed. This is what, you know, the next generation of build tools would have in common. No customization, almost no customization. Um, so, you know, configuration, better customizability, extensibility, and faster speed. And with that, we've come to the end, you know, of my talk. You can you know follow me on Twitter at Skoda underscore block, um BLBCK, which is pronounced as black. Um you can also check out Wilco at trywilco.com. And um I'm happy to like you know this um for the remaining time, which like a couple of minutes more. Um you can ask me any question you want. And um if I can answer it, I'll give you an answer. If I don't, I will make research and reach out to you personally. So thank you so much for you know joining this particular session. It was really, really nice, you know, preparing this talk for you all and really, really you know, shout out to Love Rockets, you know, for reaching out and, you know, um, scheduling this meetup. It's really, really great. So thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shadrach. Excellent presentation. Um, just like to say, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you host for us. And um, I really hope all the attendees and all the registrants who signed up will enjoy uh, watching your talk. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, just a reminder to everybody watching, the uh, recording will be sent afterwards if you would like to watch anything back. Um, and we will be sending a post-webinar email as well with a link to that, along with any other resources that uh, Shadrach would like to include um, in that email. Um, but that concludes the presentation today. Thank you once again, Shadrach, for joining us um, and sharing an excellent presentation. Um, and I hope that we can do this again in future sometime. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah. Bye. Bye-bye.